Welcome Substance Mamas, my name is Jana, and today I have the esteemed privilege of introducing and interviewing Laura, who is so incredible, has the most amazing story, and I cannot wait for all of you guys to hear all about it. So she has been married to her husband, Nate, for about 11 years, but they dated for six years, she was just telling me. They've got two daughters, one who is still here with us on earth and one who is in heaven. She's going to kind of unpack some of that in a little bit. She loves to be at the lake, watch hockey, play softball, have dance parties, volunteer at church. You guys, she is like the like largest rock star in our kids ministry. I cannot even tell you. And we're so blessed by you. I mean, there's literally nothing this woman can do. She is like organized to a T. Like if I send her an email, it's like, boom, bullet points done in like two minutes. It's amazing. So anyway, those are just some of the things about her. But today she's really going to be talking about scars and wounds. And, you know, in our culture, we we think of, of scars, you know, and wounds too as negative, but she's really going to shed some interesting light on this. So can you start off by just telling us a little bit about some past wounds that you've experienced and the scars that they've left? Absolutely, Jana. Yeah. So we all have scars. Some of them um, small, some of them really big. Some of them are are um, scars we can see. They're physical. Right. And some are on our heart or on our mind. And other people can't see them, but we know that they're there. Right. So I'm going to talk to you about two different scars today um, that I have. So the first scar I have is physical. So it's one that I can see every day in the mirror. And that is a scar from ovarian cancer. So when I was 20 years old, I was diagnosed with ovarian cancer. Mm -hmm. And in that process, I actually was cut open from a rib cage to pelvic bone. Wow. And they removed a six ounce tumor on my oh. ovary. Crazy, oh right? Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. Um, and so there's that physical scar. And in that process, I was actually dating my now husband, okay. Nate. And so there, there are a lot of um, scars that went on there as right. far as the cancer. And they actually ended up having to rip me open a second time oh to gosh. perform a similar surgery to remove other, other parts of me. Um, and so that's one of the scars I'm going to talk a little bit about yeah. today, kind of how it had affected me. And, um, in positive ways and in ways that we'll sure. unpack in a little bit. So that's one of the scars. And then the other scar, this one's more on my heart. And this one is the passing of our daughter, Ollie. So mm -hmm. Ollie was born in 2018. So March or April of 2018. And um, for the most part, she was a very normal, healthy baby. Um, she's adopted. Uh, and um, once she became, you know, a year old, mm -hmm. she started kind of uh, digressing, losing skills, and we we're like, what is going on right. here? And so first year is about eight months, we went through a process of which we were trying to figure out what's going on, how can we help her kind right. of gloom and doom, like all those racing thoughts in your mind. And eventually in September of 2019, we learned that she had what was called Tay-Sachs disease, which mm -hmm. is a lysosomal storage disease. And it is, unfortunately, there's no cure for it. So we unfortunately got to watch her study decline from mm -hmm. that point in time until she went to heaven in March of 2020. So okay. just shy of her second birthday, just a month shy. So we'll talk about that a yeah. little bit too. But yeah, yeah. We, we all have a ton of scars, whether they're small or big right. on our hearts, in our minds. So yeah. um, we're physical too. And they affect us. They affect our lives in so many ways. Right. And so I think um, as we talk today, we're going to we're going to talk a little bit about how God has used my scars um, in, in positive ways and, right. and helped me to help others and, and right. help myself and my family around me and, and grow me. So I'm going to go a little off script because I like to do that. Yeah. Um, and just with so did the ovarian cancer impact, I'm assuming, adoption and it those did. types of things. So can yeah. you kind of like explain what that process was like? Yeah, a little definitely. Bit? Yeah. So in the process of being diagnosed with ovarian cancer and being treated for it, like um, one of the wounds or scars that kind of happened immediately is like, well, is, is my then boyfriend, is he going to stick around? Like, right. I now feel barren. Like I can't mm, create children. Like that's a big part of being a woman, I feel right. like. And like growing up, like that's for some women, like your hopes mm -hmm. and dreams, right? Like I want to be a mom. I want to have my own kids. And so that very much was 
a, a big part of it. Yeah. Um, and then eventually that led my husband and I, once we got married, like, okay, we do want kids. And so uh, the adoption mountain, if you will, we right. scaled. Yeah. And we got to scale it twice. And yeah. we're actually in the process of scaling it a third you time. You are, I didn't we know that. Are, yes. Oh, so cool. um, it's just an incredible journey, but also like filled with so many valleys and right. also so many hills and triumphs. And just right. there, there are days when you're, you know, in that valley and yeah. then there are, there are seasons or days where on the mountaintop. Right. So yeah, sure. that ovarian cancer definitely impacted, impacted mm -hmm. like where I am today. Even. Yeah, of course. Cause yeah. it's, I mean, I know with any, any scar, right. It, it tells a story, right. Yeah. And so we all have them and yes, we can over, you know, I think people often think of the emotional scars and yeah. the traumas from the past or whatever. And yes, God can restore us and he can do amazing things, which you're going to kind of explore. Um, but we, we still carry that a little bit, yeah. you know what I mean? And we still work through that. And, um, but with his presence and his grace and his love, I mean, we are quicker to overcome some of the like triggers, so yeah. to speak. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I mean, how can we, how can we be grateful for these scars? I mean, yeah, especially in the two that you were talking about. Yeah. So there are a lot of different ways we can be grateful for scars, but I'm going to back up just a little bit and say in the moment when the scar is happening, being grateful or thankful is probably far from our minds, right? Yeah. Oftentimes when we see a scar coming or we're experiencing a scar again, whether it's physical mm -hmm. or emotional or uh, what have you, um, a lot of times our, our natural inclination is to get upset, um, to grieve, to be angry, to want to run and hide sometimes. Right. And so uh, a lot of times being thankful is not the, at the front of our mind. And mm -hmm. so that's hard to remember in the midst of it or when you're kind of in those valleys, if you will. Right. Um, so I think a lot of times as we reflect on our scars, we can, you know, once we've come through them or once we've gone through that valley or once we've kind of walked through those doors, we can look back and see, oh my goodness, like right. God was moving in this area. God was performing miracles, mm -hmm. small and big ones. Mm -hmm. He was helping me through these things, either giving me strength or giving me courage or right. determination or through other people helping to encourage me or give me strength or right. just lift me up or provide provide support or needs when I needed it. And so I think, you know, having that mindset and knowing, okay, God, I see this scar coming, or I see that um, the scar just happened, uh, to remember that and to remember, okay, God, you're going to use this for your glory, and mm -hmm. I'm going to be a part of that. And you're going to turn this, this pain into some purpose. You're going to be able to help me help other people down the road eventually with the scar. So having that mindset and sure. reflecting on our scars, but then also remembering as they're coming up, uh, right. just helps us so much to remember that, that God is always there. He's right. in the pain with us even when it doesn't feel like it. So right. I think um, just the simple fact of remembering our scars and then when they're coming to remember to reflect on that and, and hold that through, that God's going to see right. us through. He's going to carry us through that, yeah. even when it doesn't feel like it sometimes. Uh, a lot yeah. of times when we have scars or when we're about to get a scar, uh, our, our natural inclination just as humans, I think, is to run and hide, right? We even saw that at the beginning of the story of the Bible where Eve wants to run and hide. She doesn't want to go to God and ask right. him for forgiveness or ask him to give her strength or give her another cup of grace today. Like, no, she runs and hides. <laughs> um, that's, that's human. That's our nature. And so as we can remember to, instead of hide, run to God, He's going to give us that place of peace. He, If we continue to choose him and continue to run him, to him, even in these trials, he's going to give us that place of rest. He's going to give us a place to kind of lay those burdens mm -hmm. down. Um, again, that's hard to do. That means we're trusting him for that. We're yeah. trusting that his will and how he's going to handle it and the outcome um, is right. in his control and not ours. Yeah. Um, that definitely just helps us to remember how to be thankful for them and how to continue to run to God with them. So how did you do that in either one of those situations with, I mean, maybe even with Ollie yeah. specifically? I mean, I know that I'm assuming, well, let me back up. Even with ovarian cancer, were you a Christian at that time? I was. I would classify myself as a baby Christian at that okay. time. I was 20 years old and kind of figuring out, like, what okay. did that mean to me? Yeah, and the reason I asked that is because when I was a foster mom, um, it was the first time that I had walked through what felt like fire to me, but as a Christian. And we are, we are called to a higher way of response when there is trauma or darkness around us. 
And I was like, oh my, like all of my, um, I wanted to hide. I wanted to say, I'm not doing this. I wanted to do all these things. And I had some specific things that helped me. So mm -hmm. maybe you can kind of share yeah. either one of those scenarios or yeah. both. Like, how did you, cause it's, it's one thing to say it. Mm -hmm. You know, I think we, we all know like, okay, choose joy, like be grateful. And yeah, but at the same time, mm -hmm. it's not easy to do, right? Mm -hmm. So especially yeah. with what you're talking about, I mean, they're intense, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So there are quite a few things that I did to help myself remember to be thankful for the scars. Now, I will admit there are moments where I wasn't thankful, where yeah. I was just downright upset. Yeah. Um, but to be thankful for me meant that I needed to run to God. And so that meant that I needed to be in his shelter and be under his protection. So for me, what that looked like in running to God was consistently playing worship music in okay. the background, in the hospital, in my mm. car, at the home. Like that was a place where I was just like, okay, even if I don't feel your presence, I'm going to surround it around me and Amen. eventually I will feel your presence. And I can recall too, there were moments I will Will admit where there are songs where I'd be mocking them like oh yeah okay um, but it's one of those things like I don't want to say fake it till you make it but it's one of those things like the more you allow his spirit to surround you the more he will invade the situations and your thoughts and your mind um, and so that definitely was one way that I, that helped me um, another thing that helped me to remember to be thankful and to remember to um, you know seek God and in these scars that I was experiencing is that I remembered that I have this amazing group of women mm -hmm. around me. And so at the time, um, and still am part of a space group. And so for those of you that don't know what space groups are, they're uh, a group of women who are together. They're, um, you know, really chasing God together and supporting each other. Um, and there's vulnerability and there's confession and um, there's also the ability to pray over each other and just be in each other's lives in, in the dirt or in the weeds with each other. So to speak so the my space group just i'm eternally thankful for them and all that they've done and continue to do but um having that space group was so vital for me to feel supported and to feel god giving me strength and supporting me through them and so i think that was another way that i could be thankful like god thank you for um giving me these women placing these women in my life in this exact moment so that literally they could clean i kid you not dog poop from my backyard or oh, do them. the dishes or fill my freezer with with meals or visit at the hospital or bring pajamas to the hospital or whatever the needs were like they were there to just just help fill it so yeah. I think being thankful for that and thankful for God and in supporting me yeah. through them in those ways is also super super helpful one other way that we can be thankful is to step outside ourselves and serve and mm. that is also another thing that definitely helped me to step outside of my bubble if you will um, and serve others whatever that looked like or whatever capacity I had so that would for me look like coming to church and serving in kids ministry or um, one of our uh, very close friends um, has arthritis and so going to an arthritis walk at the Mall of America um, you know just the other things that you can do to support each other in in those moments um, to kind of step outside and go there's a world around me that's also going on and there's a world of pain around me and God can use me in those areas in a certain capacity in this season as well do you see what I'm talking about I mean I'm like literally tearing up <laughs> hearing her like seriously I could cry right now you're not even gonna cry I'm gonna cry because it's like as a mom I can't imagine walking through mm -hmm. what you've walked through and yet you're still like you are Jesus incarnate, like you are talking about serving through pain. And yeah. that is just so encouraging to me. So mm -hmm. I hope you guys feel that too. I mean, because again, it it's true and I have yeah. experienced it also, but I've not walked through what you have, but um, it's just, it's incredible. So yeah. how have, how have these experiences, even the faith that you're talking about, how has that impacted your mothering and how you yeah. walk that out on a daily basis? <laughs> I will say it's not just impacted my mothering, it's impacted, you know, everything, everything sure. that I do. Uh, but mothering specifically, it has, um, going through these scars and being thankful for them and just observing and, you know, even after the fact, looking at like how God moved in um, all of these different areas or seasons mm -hmm. or scars, it has just made me such so much more of a patient mom to expect that God is going to move. God is going to provide. 
God's will is going to be done here. I don't have to strive. I don't have to drag myself along. I don't have mm -hmm. to have the strength. Like God is going to pour that into me. God is going to help me through that, whether it's through him directly or through people around me and my support group or team. Um, and so it has just made me much more of a patient person as well. Just knowing that if God's going to move, I don't have to do all the things, if yeah. you will. Yeah. So that bleeds into motherhood in so many ways, right? Being patient with your kids, being patient with whatever scenarios are going on at school or, you know, in mm -hmm. their personal life or with family. Um, that has definitely helped me as well. Um, also going through these, these scars or trials has also helped me become um, a better person to be able to help others through this, mm -hmm. you know, to say, hey, I've walked through this valley. I know the way I've gone through it before. I can help you. I see you're going through a similar valley or, you know, if you know, the mentality of if God can do this, then surely he can do that. Or if I can do this, surely I can do that with God's help. So it kind of makes you feel almost yeah. like super mom in yeah. some ways. Some days we're like, hey, I scaled this mountain. Uh, that mountain's no problem. That's how I, I feel about childbirth, man. I mean, right. it's like I did that three times, you know? And so sometimes when I'm like, uh, complaining or whining it's like no man yeah. you just did that you can do right. this you know right. so and I think it's important to recognize like we didn't do that alone it's not our own might it was God moving yes. through us giving us strength giving us wisdom right. giving us hope giving us people right. to support us in those seasons to know he's gonna do it again she's more pious than I am <laughs> clearly I was ready to be like I did that I pushed that baby out but no you're right because Anyway, there are, that's so good. It's just, we constantly need to be thinking about that. Yeah. And that's so good. Mm -hmm. It's so good. So with the remaining time we have, what advice would you give someone who is walking through trauma currently? Yeah, yeah. so my first piece of advice would be uh, to remember to run to God and not hide. Easier said than done, right? Uh, but when we choose God and when we choose to run to him, he's going to, again, provide that shelter, provide that peace. Hiding doesn't resolve anything. It doesn't help us. It just prolongs the yeah, pain in a lot of situations. True. So just, you know, looking up and running to him, I think would be my mm -hmm. first piece of advice. My second piece of advice would be to get that group of women around you now. Don't wait until you're in the valley to say, all right, I need some support. People come around me now. No, do that now. Get those women around you that are going to support you, encourage you, kind of push you, strengthen you. Um, really, really connect with those women and yeah. get that core group of women together now. Um, that space group is so vital. And when you're not in a trial, someone else is. So you can be there to support them. You know, iron sharpens iron and God's going to use us and each other to bless each other yeah. and just strengthen each other. And as we keep running towards God with each other, like, oh my goodness, there's nothing that can't be solved. There's nothing yeah. that's impossible at that time. So yeah. that would be another piece of advice for people running through um, a trial or, you know, receiving a scar, yeah. if you will. Yeah. Um, my last one would be figure out what being thankful looks like to you and do it. So whether that's playing worship music, serving, or doing something that just fills you up and makes you feel good, uh, but that it reflects God. So whatever being thankful mm -hmm. to you means in reflecting you know, God, I think will will definitely help too. So, you know, you'll have those go-to things. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's serving, maybe it's painting, maybe it's cooking a meal for a family, maybe it's supporting a foster family. You don't know what, right. what what's out there and we're all different and unique in that way. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just remembering that there are other people, you know, out there as well that are going through scars and we can help them and God can use us to help them in their story as well. So good, that's so good. And even just to kind of piggyback off of that, she wrote an article on grief that is going to be published soon, and so I will make sure that that's in the notes so you guys can click on that and find that at substancechurch.com slash moms. Because again, having heard her story and then reading the wisdom and the insight that you provide, it was mind-blowing. And there is, a sort, there is a way to walk through grief um, joyously. It's possible. It really actually is. It's hard, and you can't do it without community mm -hmm. and all these other things that she's mentioned. So... Thank you so, so much for sharing. I know you guys were blessed by that. If you guys have any questions for her, for sure you can reach out to her. Find her on, are you on Facebook? Mm -hmm. Okay, find her on Facebook, Laura Chapman. You can reach out to anybody on the leadership team and just thank you so much. Have a blessed day, you guys.